to my channel. Today I wanted to make a video talking about two documentary slash films that have come out recently that are focused around mental health, primarily eating disorders, and that is Demi Lovato's docufilm, uh, Simply Complicated, I think that's what it's called, which can be found on YouTube, and that's where I watched it anyway, and Louis Thoreau's documentary which was aired last week on the BBC, which is on BBC iPlayer. I don't know if you can watch it from outside the UK, I don't think you can. Just go to the BBC website and have a look. I just want to talk about my thoughts and feelings about both of them because I felt compelled to do so after watching them. I'm going to talk about the things that I like, the things that I didn't like. I'm going to start off with the Demi Lovato film, Simply Complicated. I think I'm slightly out of her kind of age range of her fan base being a grown up and all. I like some of her songs. I wouldn't say like I'm a fan of hers, but I like her voice. She seems like a nice person. Like I've always found her quite personable and I like a lot of what she stands for because she's very active in the mental health community. And she's spent the last few years talking openly and campaigning uh, about mental health, uh, which I think is only a good thing. Despite the fact that I wouldn't say I'm a fan of hers, although I like her music, I like her as a person and I appreciate her and what she's doing. So I thought I'd give it a watch. I didn't really know what to expect. Like I thought it was just gonna be, I thought it was gonna be like a follow round kind of um, docufilm, similar to the Lady Gaga one, which I watched last week as well, actually. Um, just like a follow round, her talking about things, but it was a lot more structured than that. If you haven't seen it, it kind of had her sitting down and talking about things, but then there was some interviews with people in it from her life. There was like some old footage and photos. Uh, also, there was some kind of follow me around stuff. And I think that that was quite a good mix because it meant that you got, it wasn't just a one-sided story. You got to hear from all the people around her about her struggles. The first half of this was talking mainly about her addictions. So like, drugs and alcohol I believe and kind of how she's doing with that and kind of where it started what happened when she was at her worst and how she's come through that and the second half was based on the eating disorder side of things and I'll talk about the fact that it was split in two for a minute and I'll talk about the two parts separately now the first part with the like the, the addiction part I really enjoyed kind of finding out more about it because I didn't I didn't know the extent of her abuse. I kind of knew roughly, but as I said, because I'm not a fan of hers, I don't I don't know the ins and outs of kind of what she's been through. The thing that I enjoyed most about this, probably most about the whole documentary, is that she did not sugarcoat how shit she was. I don't mean her addiction and how bad it was. I mean what a shit person she was at her worst because addiction can make you become, not it doesn't make you become someone you're not, it, but, but it can make you behave in a way that you wouldn't normally behave. Um, and she highlighted this really well. The people around her highlighted this really well. And she just held her hands up and was like, I was a bitch. I did some really shitty things, which I really applaud because I think a lot of people, especially in the entertainment industry, would shy away from... Some people that have talked about things like this in the past have kind of tried to make it more like a woe is me. I had things so bad. Uh, please feel sorry for me. I was shit. But, you know, I went through all of this. Whilst there was like the elements of like, she was telling a lot of her story, which was sad and did um, garner sympathy, but it wasn't about that. Uh, it's just the fact that she's been through, th through some things that are really hard. She wasn't afraid to admit her mistakes and talk about how she's gone through them. I, I personally would have appreciated more of her talking about what she does to stay through, like to get to work through things. Like she talked about like the program that she's on. It didn't really go in as much depth as I would like, but that's that might just be me. Um, and I think the same with kind of the eating disorder side of things. We didn't hear much about how she came out the other side, although she did admit she's not through the other side with the eating disorder. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Talking about the kind of split in two thing for a minute. Uh, I didn't realise kind of that it was going to be about both. I thought it was mainly going to be about like the mental health side of things, so like the eating disorder. And it was a lot more focused on the addiction, like the first half or just over the first half. And I don't know how I feel about the fact that it was kind of split, like the eating disorder, I don't think it was mentioned at all, but a few photos of her looking very thin until kind of they started talking about the eating disorder. It wasn't kind of like talking about the, the fact that she was going through these things at the same time. I mean, obviously they did that for a reason, but I wonder if for me, I would have appreciated more having them both intertwined, like following the story from when these things started, because eating disorders and addiction are very interlinked and I think that maybe that would have brought some of that to light more 
because not many people understand that because an eating disorder is an addiction in itself. I probably would have preferred that but as I said they obviously did that for a reason and maybe it wouldn't have worked that way but I'm just saying that I would have appreciated that. As for the kind of eating disorder side solely I don't think it went into as much depth as I was expecting which I respect as it's something that she admitted she still struggles through and I know that speaking like with myself I'm somebody with an eating disorder I know that sometimes when you're still going through something it's hard to kind of talk about how you're going through it rather than I could talk about things in my past that I've kind of overcome or that not even that I've overcome but if it's something that I'm still very struggling with on a day-to-day -day basis especially as people will be looking at her as an inspiration like looking for her to say this is what I did you can do it too we can all do this stay strong and all of that I think she made the right decision maybe in not going into it that but I there are some things I think I would have appreciated more detail about I'm not talking about like details of what she did and all of that because I think that just that doesn't help anybody but I think she went into a lot of detail about the um the drug addiction side of things and I would have liked a little bit more from the eating disorder side of things I think that would have kind of rounded out a little bit more but as I said it didn't really take away from from me watching it and from me enjoying it and coming out thinking wow I really appreciated this I have a lot of respect for her that's kind of like how I feel about it I'd love to know what you guys think obviously I know that the Louis Thoreau documentary not everyone in the world will be able to watch I don't think anyway um, whereas with the Demi Lovato one then more people would be able to watch it speaking of the Louis Thoreau documentary I will get onto that now I'd heard a few like months ago that he was making this and I was not apprehensive but I was questionable I was like you know people have made eating disorder documentaries and they've done all this kind of stuff before it's never really done anything new it's never really explored anything new or been a talking point it's just played into the same idea that everyone all, all has of an eating disorder so i knew that i wanted to watch it but i would be watching it carefully because some of those views about the standard eating disorder can be upsetting for somebody who has not a typical eating disorder who has typical eating disorder habits i'm really out of breath. i'm really out of breath so although i was slightly worried about it i did decide to watch it but understanding that i could turn it off and i probably would end up not watching it all because you know i wasn't expecting anything new and i was very wrong a few minutes in i already felt like this was going to show a side of things that hadn't been shown before and I don't even know what it is that was so different about it. I think he did an amazing job. Um, the way he spoke, the way he handled it, I, I really respected. And the fact that after he spoke to people with an eating disorder, spoke to all these people, he came out of it with his with an opinion and he was talking about how he feels about it. And what he was saying, he actually had a real empathy and a real sympathy for the illness and understanding that it is an illness it's not a choice it's not a diet yeah i really i really respected that and that kind of something that shone through um as i said within a few minutes of watching it i think there was something that one of the girls said because if you don't know about what this documentary is but it's basically louis throw is it louis throw or louis throw i don't know he is a documentary maker and he spent time uh, with in an eating disorder unit or in a few eating disorder units uh, getting to know a few people in there and also uh, some people in the community as well i think he also talked to the family of somebody who had uh, who had an eating disorder who lost their life within a few minutes of like with the first person he spoke to she said something and i was like there's something about this really resonates with me there was something in each what each of the girls said or each of the women said that really resonated with me that i really understood and that hit me because I was like normally when people with anorexia or eating disorders in general are interviewed um, I will just state that this documentary was about anorexia rather than eating disorders so it was focused on anorexia not bulimia uh, or binge eating what was I going to say normally when there are documentaries or programs made about people with anorexia the people come out and say the same things and it just plays into the stereotype of an anorexic person this I felt worked very well in breaking that stereotype and breaking that stigma and just seeing some of the people talking about it on twitter uh, when it was trending on twitter there are people that kind of didn't really understand they understood now that it was an illness and they had a lot of respect for people going through it which i think is fantastic it's something that is very misunderstood and the fact that this documentary has got people talking is only a good thing i would love to see more on this series um maybe with that's one of the things i'm going to talk about with a bit more diversity because 
although it showed um, in the clinic, it showed that there was a male in the clinic, it was mainly focused on the girls in there or the women in there. So a bit more diversity in terms of uh, gender. However, I think it did a good job in showing that it's not just young white girls that suffer with eating disorders. There was a Muslim girl that he talked to. It also showed an older lady who lived in a community with the illness. And again, that's something that I can relate to as, first of all, I'm not an older lady, but I'm 32. Um, but I have also, in each of my admissions, I've been in hospital with ladies that are 40, 50, 60. This isn't just something that affects people of a young age, this isn't just something that affects white girls. Anyone can be affected by an eating disorder. You know, If you know anything about the Minnesota study, um, which is a study which I will leave links to down below because it's too complicated for me to get into, but it shows that there were men that were put through this study that had no history of an eating disorder that developed eating disorder uh, signs after when being starved. So there is a physiological effect uh, on eating disorder behaviours. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, a bit more diversity. I'd love, if there was a follow-up documentary, I'd love to see some males interviewed because I think the fact that this has already got people talking um, in terms of the illness to get more talk about to get more people talking about the fact that males can suffer, I think it'd be a fantastic thing. The other thing that I really liked about it was it was very, very, very honest. It didn't glamorise the illness at all. I don't think anyway, I know that some people might think differently, but I think everything was done very tastefully and very respectfully of the people in the, in the documentary and also for people watching it. Everything I've heard about people um, with eating disorders who watch this, they've all said the same thing, that it you know they were expecting it to be glamorized and it wasn't it was um it was just honest without glamorizing things which it is a hard thing to do and it shows why he is such an amazing documentary maker the fact that he was able to do this in such a way that has made people feel um made people change their views which is, is what it's done that's what i've seen people saying i think that's all that's all the notes that i've written down about both of them so i'd love to know what you think about if you've watched either of these um, if you haven't watched them, then I would say give them a go. I think, obviously, the whole triggering thing. People can be triggered by anything, and obviously everyone is triggered by different things. I really hate that word. It really annoys me. I understand that it can really, some things can really affect people. Obviously, I can't speak for the majority. I can't speak for everyone. But I don't think there was kind of anything offensively, ugh, anything offensively or obtusely triggering in, in either of these. Obviously, I can't, I can't say for sure that you won't be if you decide to watch it. But for me, I think they were both very tastefully done and I really enjoyed them. I would love to know what you think, so leave your comments down below. Let's have a discussion about this. Please feel free to share this video around, subscribe if you haven't already. I also have a new channel called Bean and Me where I talk about my pregnancy because I am uh, four and a half months pregnant. I'll leave a link to that down below. So I'd love it if you'd subscribe to Bean and Me if you're interested in my pregnancy and my baby. Like this video and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.